Hello everyone, Prasad Domla here. Today I'll show you how to protect or um, secure a web application using uh, Oracle Access Manager and uh, WebGate. Before starting, let me tell you about uh, the environment I'll be using today. I'm using Oracle uh, Linux 6.7 64-bit virtual machine and I have my uh, Oracle Identity and Access Management product uh, installed and configured. And the version of uh, Oracle Access Manager I'm using is 11.1.2.3. Uh, I have OHS 12C installed and configured in uh, standalone mode and uh, in 12C WebGate is installed as part of OHS installation but if you are using uh, 11G version of uh, OHS you need to install uh, WebGate separately. Next I have uh, Oracle Unified Directory 11.1.2.3 version installed and configured with some sample users and we'll use it uh, as our primary user store for authentication and authorization. I have separate videos on uh, how to install and configure uh, Oracle Identity and Access Management, Oracle HTTP Server, that is OHS, and Oracle Unified Directory, OUD. Please have a look uh, if you want to know how to set up this environment. I'll leave the links in the description or you can uh, click on the information icon on top right corner of this video. I have all these components on the same server. Uh, this is okay for uh, demo purposes, but ideally in production environments, uh, you'll have them on uh, separate physical machines. And I have assigned 12 GB of uh, memory to my uh, virtual machine, which should be sufficient to run uh, OIAM admin server and uh, OIAM managed server, OHS and uh, OUD. Now let me uh, briefly tell you about the single sign-on request flow in uh, Oracle Access Manager. Uh, let me uh, divide the flow into four layers. End user layer, which is uh, normally a web browser. And uh, web server layer, where the application is hosted and WebGate is installed and uh, OAM server which is the core component of uh, single sign-on where all the authentications and authorizations are processed and finally uh, user store where our user profiles are stored. In my case it is Oracle Unified Directory. You can use any uh, compatible LDAP to store your uh, user profiles for authentications and authorizations. First the end user requests a web resource uh, using a web server URL and the request will reach the web server. In my case uh, Oracle HTTP server the WebGate which is installed on the web server intercepts the incoming uh, HTTP requests and sends it to uh, Oracle Access Manager for processing. Oracle Access Manager first checks if a session is already present. If it's present, it checks if the session is uh, still valid based on the session uh, timeout settings. If the session is not present, then it checks for the policies for the requested resource and determines uh, if it's uh, protected or not. If it's not protected, it will send the decision to the WebGate and WebGate will serve the requested page without asking for any uh, credentials. If the resource is protected, then OAM will determine how it is protected based on the policies set by the administrators. There are different ways of uh, protecting an application, which I'll show you later in this video. In most cases, it will be uh, LDAP based authentication, but there are many uh, other authentication uh, methods available in uh, OAM. So OAM sends the login page to the end user it's also referred as a credential collector. User provides his uh, credentials which are uh, sent to OAM through WebGate and OAM will connect to the backend uh, user store and validates the credentials. At this stage OAM will create two cookies OAM authent cookie and uh, OAM underscore ID. Once the credentials are validated it's time for uh, authorization where OAM determines whether uh, authenticated user is authorized to view the requested resource or not. This is determined using the authorization policy set by the administrator and the decision is uh, sent back uh, to the WebGate. If the user is authorized, WebGate will serve the web page and if the user is not authorized, it will redirect the request to an authorized page which can be customized. This is how the request flows between these uh, four layers when you access any URL that is uh, protected using uh, Oracle Access Manager. Next, uh, let me introduce you to some basic uh, Oracle Access Manager terminology which I'll be referring to in this uh, video. First thing is uh, WebGate, also called as uh, OAM Access Client. As I said earlier, WebGate is uh, installed on all uh, web servers where uh, the applications are hosted. You have WebGate software available for uh, different uh, variety of uh, web servers like Oracle HTTP Server, IBM HTTP Server, or uh, Apache. Microsoft IIS or uh, OTD that is uh, Oracle Traffic Director and uh, Domino Web Server as well. For OHS 12C versions, WebGate is uh, included in uh, OHS itself but for uh, older OHS versions and uh, other web servers, you need to download the software separately. 
The role of WebGate is uh, to intercept uh, incoming HTTP requests and uh, send them to OAM, that is Oracle Access Manager, for processing. Next, we have two types of uh, data stores, uh, system store and uh, identity store. System store is used to store administrator credentials used to log into OAM console and uh, other administration uh, commands uh, like uh, remote registration, WLST, etc. Identity store is the user store where the user credentials and groups are stored, which are used for uh, application uh, authentication and uh, authorizations. By default, OAM uses uh, WebLogic Embedded LDAP for both system store and uh, identity store. I'll show you how to configure uh, external LDAP uh, later in this video. Next, we have uh, something called as a host identifier, which is a logical representation of a web server host. You can create a host identifier while uh, registering the web gate with uh, Oracle Access Manager. Next, we have a authentication scheme, which is basically the method of authentication. It also defines the level of authentication and uh, underlying authentication modules. Next, we have uh, application domain, which is a logical container of uh, all the resources, authentication and uh, authorization policies. Application domains can be created based on uh, business needs like uh, location based or uh, business unit based like, you know, HR uh, application domain or finance application domain, etc. Next, we have authentication and authorization policies. These are set of rules and conditions defined uh, for an application resource which defines you know, which uh, authentication method to use, which uh, group of uh, users can access a particular application, and uh, what header responses are to be sent back to the application after authentication on the authorization, and many other uh, parameters. There are many options available to configure these uh, policies. I'll show you the main ones uh, later in this video. Next, we have something called as responses. These are uh, values uh, that are sent back to the application after successful authentication or uh, authorization. You can send three types of uh, responses, header responses, session responses, and uh, cookie responses. I'll discuss more about responses later when I uh, show you the demo. Now let's uh, get into the actual process of uh, protecting an application using uh, Oracle Access Manager and uh, WebGate. I'll not be able to cover all uh, OEM components and options in this video, but uh, after watching this uh, video, you should be able to understand the basic uh, Oracle Access Manager policy model and uh, main configuration options available to secure a web application using uh, OAM. I have my uh, OAM admin server and managed server started on ports uh, 7001 and 14100 uh, respectively and my uh, OHS is running on uh, 7777. So as you can see, this is my uh, WebLogic uh, administration console. Then you can see my admin server and uh, OAM managed servers are uh, up and running. I don't need uh, other uh, managed servers for this demo, so I have uh, not started them. And uh, on my uh, OHS, I have uh, created two uh, sample applications, uh, my app one and uh, my app two, uh, and we'll be protecting them using uh, Oracle Access Manager. So the URLs for those applications would be Oracle Linux 6, colon double seven double seven. that is my uh, OHS port, and then slash uh, my app one. So this is a sample uh, HTML page. And then I have another HTML page. My app 2. So this is my application 2 home page. So we'll try to protect these two application URLs using uh, Oracle Access Manager. And then I have another page created for uh, unauthorized uh, access, which is uh, running on same OHS that is Oracle Linux 6 colon double seven double seven slash unauthorized dot HTML. So we'll use this page to redirect the user if uh, the authorization uh, fails. I'll show you how to do that later. And as you can see, as of now, for uh, my app one and my app two, uh, there is no login page and uh, the pages are served directly without any uh, credentials. And after configuring these uh, two applications with uh, OAM, we should be able to see a login page where you can use our uh, user ID and password to log into these applications. First step in this process is to configure WebGate. So you need to navigate uh, to your OHS uh, middleware home. In my case, it is U01 uh, app, Oracle product, and then uh, OHS FMW. Here you can uh, find a directory called as uh, WebGate. 
as I said in 12C versions of OHS webgate is uh, already installed uh, along with uh, OHS so navigate to webgate and then uh, OHS and then tools and then you need to go to deploy webgate so here you have a script to deploy uh, this particular webgate into your uh, OHS instance directory so you need to uh, execute deploy uh, webgate instance dot asset script along with hyphen w option which is nothing but your OHS instance uh, directory in my case it is uh, under my domain config fmw config components OHS instances and then OHS one you need to provide another option here hyphen OH that is uh, nothing but your um, Oracle home that is uh, OHS uh, Oracle home which is uh, u01 app Oracle product and OHS FMW in my case so once you execute this script it basically copies uh, the webgate related files to your uh, instance directory that is nothing but your OHS instance directory so if you go to your instance directory here you can find the directory created for our uh, webgate now we have uh, webgate related files in our uh, OHS instance directory now we need to uh, edit our uh, httpd.conf file so webgate uh, provides a script to edit uh, httpd.conf so navigate to OHS tools again that is uh, under your OHS home webgate OHS tools and then set up install tools here you have a script uh, called as uh, edit http conf execute it along with uh, hyphen w and uh, hyphen oh uh, options as we have done for uh, deploy uh, webgate instance.sh so execute the script with uh, hyphen w i'll just copy the path here and then hyphen oh that is nothing but your ohs uh, oracle home which is uh, ohs fmw so this script will take the backup of uh, existing httpd.conf uh, file and then modifies it uh, to include uh, webgate.conf uh, so that is done now and that's it on uh, the ohs side as of now next we need to uh, register this uh, webgate with the uh, oracle access manager so let's uh, log into oam console which will be uh, running on 7001 oracle linux 6 colon 7001 slash oam console login with your uh, weblogic credentials this is oam console's uh, home page or uh, launchpad you can register webgate using sso agent registration here under uh, quick start results or you can click create webgate under uh, agent section so i'll just uh, select create webgate here it will take me to uh, webgate creation screen first you need to uh, select the version in our case it will be uh, lavengi and then you need to provide a name for your uh, webgate i'll just give uh, mine as uh, oracle linux 6 that is nothing but our uh, host name and then you can uh, provide some description next uh, we need to provide the base url that is nothing but your uh, OHS URL so that would be HTTP colon slash slash Oracle Linux 6 and then your port number double seven double seven next you can provide a password for your uh, access client this is the password used by uh, webgate to connect to uh, OAM server so you can provide any password here next the host identifier is uh, automatically populated based on the webgate name so the web resources or uh, context routes uh, will be linked to the host manager which will be um, using in the policies so i'll leave the host identifier as it is next you have many parameters that you can use to customize the behavior of uh, the webgate you can refer to uh, oracle documentation for the list of uh, parameters in my case i'm not adding any custom parameters next you have a security option so this is basically uh, to secure the communication between uh, oracle access manager and uh, webgate so you have uh, open simple or cert modes here in open mode there will be no encryption in simple mode oam will use uh, self-signed certificates to secure the communication and in uh, cert mode it uses uh, certificates signed by a third-party certification authority 
So it's recommended to use uh, cert mode in production environments. And also note that uh, your OAM should be running in the same mode uh, you use uh, here. By default, OAM runs in uh, open mode. So if you want to use simple or cert modes, you need to first change your uh, OAM mode and restart your Oracle Access Manager uh, Manage Server. So you can change the OAM mode using the configuration section. Navigate to Server Instances down here. Here you can do an empty search. So click on this search button here. It will list down your um, OAM Manage Server. Select that. Then here you can see the default mode is uh, open. So before uh, selecting uh, simple or uh, cert modes uh, while creating the web gate, you need to select the same mode here and then uh, restart your uh, OAM Manage Server. So I'll leave the default uh, open mode for this demo. So let me uh, get back to web gate creation screen. You can select a virtual host option if your OHS uh, contains uh, multiple uh, websites and uh, domain names using uh, virtual hosting. I'm not selecting that because I'm not using uh, virtual hosting. Next, you have an option to uh, create uh, authentication and authorization policies automatically, which can be customized later according to your uh, needs. It's better to select this option rather than uh, creating uh, all the policies from scratch and it saves uh, some time. So I'll select this uh, auto create policies. And then you have an option of uh, IP validation. So IP validation is a security feature which uh, checks the client's uh, IP address and the IP address stored in uh, the cookie. So single sign on will happen only if uh, these two IPs uh, matches. Otherwise, a user must uh, re-authenticate. So if you want, you can uh, select that option. It's always better to select it in uh, production environments. Next, uh, you have protected and uh, public uh, resourceless. By default, all the files and directories under your uh, web server root directory will be protected, which is represented as uh, slash and then uh, star star. So you can customize uh, the list here. So in my case, uh, my uh, application context root is uh, my app one and uh, my app two. So I'll just uh, give it as slash my app one. And then I'll uh, add another uh, resource list. And I'll give it as uh, my app too. Okay, and if you want to unprotect anything or if you want to make any um, directories or files uh, as public, then you can add those uh, relative URIs in your uh, public uh, resource list. So for this uh, demo, I'm not adding anything here. So once you provide all these details, you can click apply here. So once you uh, click apply, you will see a bunch of other parameters. Okay, you can you can customize uh, these parameters uh, based on your uh, business needs. I'm not explaining uh, everything here. So the important ones uh, would be the timeout values here. So you can set your uh, timeout uh, values based on your um, needs. I'll leave all other uh, values uh, as default. Also, please note that uh, OAM port is uh, specified as um, 5575 here and not uh, 14100. This 5575 port is uh, called as uh, OAM proxy port. And WebGates uh, uses this uh, particular port for uh, communicating with uh, Oracle Access Manager. This is mainly to enable uh, backward uh, compatibility for uh, older versions of uh, WebGate. So once uh, the WebGate is uh, created, uh, OAM generates certain files based on the security uh, mode selected. As we have selected open mode, it generates uh, obaccessclient.xml and uh, cvalid.sso. In uh, simple and cert modes, additional uh, certificate and uh, key files are generated, which are uh, AAA underscore cert dot PEM and uh, AAA underscore uh, key dot uh, PEM. So we need to copy all these files to WebGate's uh, config directory on the web server, that is uh, OHS. You can either uh, download these files from OAM console by uh, clicking on this uh, download button here, which will download all these uh, files. You can then uh, upload uh, the zip file to your uh, OHS uh, config directory and then extract them. You can also find uh, these files under the output directory inside your uh, OAM domain. So as we have OAM and uh, OHS on the same machine, so let's copy them directly on the server itself. So let's go to our uh, domain home that will be in our FMW, user projects, domains, and then OAM domain. Here you have a folder called as output, under which there will be another folder with your uh, WebGate name. So a separate folder will be created for uh, each and every WebGate you register with the OAM. 
So in our case, our uh, webgate name is Oracle Linux 6. So get into that folder. Here you can see ob access client uh, .xml and then uh, cvalid.sso. You also need to uh, copy this valid directory where you will be having uh, another cvalid.sso. So let me copy them to my uh, OHS um, webgates uh, config uh, directory. So that will be under, so I'll say cp ob access client.xml and then cvalid.sso. webgate and then config. So you need to copy these files into this directory. So let me copy the wallet directory as well. Okay, so I have copied uh, all these files into our uh, webgate's uh, config directory. At this stage, uh, if you restart your uh, OHS, the application will be uh, protected using the default uh, authentication and uh, authorization policies. So let's restart uh, OHS and test if the application is protected. So I'll navigate to my uh, OHS domain bin directory and then restart my uh, OHS. Now my OHS is uh, restarted. So let me access uh, my app in a new browser. So it would be Oracle Linux 6 colon double seven double seven slash my app one. So as you can see, as of now, it's protected by uh, uh, default uh, authentication and authorization policies. And uh, by default, OAM uses uh, embedded LDAP for authentication. So you should be able to log in with uh, WebLogic ID. So let me give my WebLogic credentials. Okay, now I'm logged into my uh, application. So that's how an application is uh, protected. Now let's see what's happening uh, on OAM side and how we can uh, customize the policies uh, based on our needs. Let me go back to my uh, OAM console. So this is my uh, OAM console's homepage. Let me first uh, show you uh, how to configure external LDAP for authentications and uh, authorizations. So I'll be using my uh, Oracle Unified directory for this demo. So first let me verify if my uh, OUD is running. I'm starting my uh, OUD here. Okay, my uh, OUD is uh, started now. So I'll be using uh, this OUD uh, for our uh, authentications and authorizations. I also have some sample users created in my OUD. So I'll show you the sample users here. Uh, I'm using uh, Apache Directory Studio to connect to my uh, OUD. So let me connect to my OUD. And my OUD is uh, running on um, port 1389. So this is my uh, root domain. DC is equal to OIAM and then DC is equal to com. And I have my uh, users under OU is equal to people. Okay, these are all the sample users which I have created. Again, if you want to know how to install and configure uh, OUD with these sample users, just um, watch my video. And I have my uh, groups under uh, OU is equal to groups. So now we need to create a connection to that uh, OUD on our uh, OAM console. So navigate to configuration tab here and then uh, user identity stores. As you can see, uh, we have our default um, embedded LDAP that is nothing but user identity store already created during uh, the installation process. So now we'll add our uh, OUD. So select create here and then provide details specific to your uh, LDAP. In my case, it's uh, OUD. So I'll call uh, my uh, store name as uh, OUD. You can provide any name here. And then store type, need to select Oracle Unified Directory. As you can see, you have many uh, other LDAPs compatible uh, with your uh, Oracle Access Manager. So you can use any of these uh, LDAP uh, directory servers. So in my case, uh, I'm selecting Oracle Unified Directory. You can provide uh, optional uh, description. If you're using SSL, you can enable uh, SSL here and then you need to provide a location. Location is uh, nothing but your um, host name and uh, port number. So my uh, host name is Oracle Linux 6 colon 1389. That is nothing but my uh, LDAP port and then password of my uh, administrator and then my administrator uh, username. That would be CN is equal to directory manager. 
in case of uh, OUD. So provide your uh, host name and port number and then the credentials for your LDAP. Next you need to provide a login ID attribute that is nothing but uh, the ID which uh, the end users use to log into your uh, applications. So in my case it is nothing but UID so as you can see UID is equal to user dot zero so that will be my uh, login ID attribute. Okay, so OAM will come and search your uh, LDAP based on this uh, login ID attribute during the authentication process. So in my case, it is UID and then the password attribute. So the password attribute in my case is user password. So this is the password attribute. Next, you need to provide the search base. So you need to tell OAM where to search for your users. So in my case, all my users are present under OU is equal to people. So I'll provide this as my uh, user search base. Next, you need to provide group search base. So all my groups will be present under OU is equal to groups. So I'll provide this as my uh, group search base. And that's it. Uh, you, if you want, uh, you can change these um, connection specific uh, details, but I'll leave them as it is. And then you can test the connection here. You should be able to see a successful message here and then click OK and apply. So now our uh, OUD connection is uh, created successfully. Once the user store uh, connection is uh, created, we need to uh, configure it to be used for our uh, application authentications and uh, authorizations. So let's go to application security tab again, which is nothing but the main uh, launch pad and then uh, go to authentication modules under the plugin section. Here do an empty search, just click on this search button here. It will list down all the modules here. So in our case, uh, our authentication module is LDAP because all our uh, authentications are based on uh, OUD. So select that. Here you need to select the user identity store. By default, it is uh, user identity store one, which is the embedded LDAP. But in our case, we need to select my OUD. So now uh, OAM will search in your uh, Oracle Unified Directory for all the authentications and uh, authorizations. So click apply here. Now let's uh, look at the default application domains and uh, authentication and authorization policies uh, created. So from the launch pad, select uh, application domains and then do an empty search. Here you can see our uh, application domain is created based on the WebGate uh, name, which is uh, Oracle Linux 6. And these two are the default uh, application uh, domains created during the installation, which are used to protect uh, OAM and OIM uh, administration consoles. So select your uh, new application domain that is uh, Oracle Linux 6. This is the summary screen where you have the name and uh, other uh, parameters. And then you have resources, authentication policies and authorization policies. So resources are nothing but uh, the context routes of your uh, web application. So if you do an empty search, here you can see we have added uh, my app one and my app uh, two. And then you can see the authentication policy and uh, authorization policy. So if you want, uh, you can add additional uh, resources from here. So you can just click uh, create here and then uh, specify uh, your uh, additional uh, resource specific details. So I'm not adding any uh, additional resource as of now. Next, you have authentication policies. So by default, uh, Oracle Access Manager creates uh, public resource policy and protected resource policy. So you can add uh, your resources into public resource policy if you want to unprotect them or uh, if you want to exclude from uh, OAM authentication. And all your protected uh, resources will be added to your protected resource policy. So if you click on uh, protected resource policy, you can see the resources added here. And then uh, you have something called as authentication scheme. So this is the authentication uh, scheme which is used for all the resources added to this particular uh, policy. So here we are using uh, LDAP scheme as our authentication uh, scheme. You can provide uh, success URLs and uh, failure URLs here. So if the authentication uh, fails, you can redirect the user to a custom uh, URL or uh, after successful authentication, you can uh, redirect the user to a success uh, URL. And then you have uh, something called as responses here. So I'll discuss more about responses uh, while talking about uh, authorization policies. So let's go to authorization policies now. Again, here uh, we have uh, two uh, 
authorization policies, public resource policy and protected resource policy. So if you go to protected resource policy and then go to resources. So here you have uh, the resources added to your um, protected resource policy. And then additionally here you have something called as conditions and rules. So conditions and rules are uh, basically interlinked. So a condition is uh, nothing but a filter which uh, creates a group based on uh, identities or IPs, times and uh, attributes. So let me uh, create some sample conditions. By default a true condition will be added which satisfies uh, everything. So let's add uh, some custom conditions. So click on add button here. So under type you have four types apart from true. You have uh, IP range, you have identity, temporal and uh, attribute. So IP range is nothing but uh, creating a condition based on your uh, IPs. Say for example, if you want to allow access or uh, deny access to um, you know certain uh, set of IP addresses, you can specify it using IP range condition. So let's uh, name it as uh, IP condition. And then select your condition and then you need to uh, specify uh, condition specific uh, parameters here. So click add and then you can specify the IP range like say for example 10.1.1.12 say 10.1.1.10. So if you add this condition only these IPs will be allowed or uh, denied access to the application. So whether to allow or deny access that will be specified in the rules. Next let me show you identity condition. So select identity here and then name it as identity condition and then you can specify the identities. Identities are nothing but users and groups. So select your condition and down below here select add. You can either add users and groups or you can add uh, LDAP search filter. So let me uh, select users and groups. So on this screen you need to uh, select the store name first. So I'll select my OUD. And then you need to uh, select the entity type, whether uh, user or group. So you can either add users or you can add a group. So let me select user here and then entity name, I'll just uh, say star. So it will list down all the users and then search. So here you have all the users. You can select individual users and add them uh, to the policy. So for demo purpose, I'll just select uh, two users, user.0 and user.1. Next, let me uh, show you temporal type condition. Temporal is nothing but time based. Okay, so select temporal here and then uh, I'll just call it as time condition and select it. So now you need to specify uh, start time and uh, end time. Okay, so say for example, if you want to uh, allow access only during business hours on business days, so you can specify 09 colon zero 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 and then say seventeen zero 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 and then you can select what days you want to allow or deny access so I'll say Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday so you can add such time based uh, conditions as well next you have attribute based condition so if you want to allow or uh, deny access based on a particular attribute of the user then you can uh, create attribute based condition. So I'll select attribute here. And then I'll call it as uh, attribute condition. Add selected. So select your uh, attribute condition here. And then in this section select add. Here you need to specify what type of attribute. Say for example if you want to allow users with a particular attribute. Say for example postcode. Okay. So if you want to allow or deny users with uh, postal code 50369, say for example, you can provide this attribute in your uh, condition. So I'll just say attribute name is uh, postal code and then operator you can specify starts with or equals or contains. So I'll just say equals and then you can provide whatever value. So in my case, I'll provide uh, 50369. So you can add any number of uh, conditions on their uh, respective values like this. Okay, next we have something called as rules. Rules specify whether to allow or uh, deny access to the conditions. 
you have uh, all these uh, new conditions are listed down here and you have two sections allow rule and deny rule so the conditions uh, which you want to allow you can add in the allow rule and uh, the conditions which you want to deny access you can add in the deny rule and you also have two options here you can either select all selected conditions or any of the selected conditions okay so let me remove the default one here and then i'll just add identity condition so all the users and groups added in this identity condition will be allowed access and then you can uh, specify uh, deny access here if you want to uh, deny any of these conditions you can specify here so as of now for the demo purposes i'll just add this identity condition where we have added two users user.0 and user.1 so the application will be accessed only by these two users because we have added only that condition in the allow rule next we have uh, something called as responses responses are the values uh, sent back to the application after uh, successful authentication or uh, authorizations say for example uh, the application uh, need um, logged in users uh, mail id and mobile number but uh, application will not have uh, access to your uh, oud where your user profiles are stored so oam is uh, responsible to uh, send those values back to the applications which is achieved using uh, responses so you can send responses either after um, successful authentication or uh, successful authorization so you need to specify the responses in respective policies now let me show you how to add a response say for example application needs uh, users uh, mail id and uh, mobile number so the attribute names are mail and mobile so let's add these two values in responses so click add here here you have uh, three types of uh, responses you can either uh, set header responses or session responses or cookie responses so in our case it would be header responses so that the application can retrieve uh, the values from uh, headers you know in whatever uh, language the application is written like java or php or asp or something so let me select header here and then the name i can specify some name say oam underscore i'll just uh, call it oam user underscore mail and then the value so for value you need to uh, follow the namespace uh, specifications so in my case uh, it will be user attribute so dollar user dot attr that is nothing but attribute dot attribute name so in our case say for example mail add here and then let's add another response select header and then name i'll just uh, give it as oam user underscore mobile and then the value will be dollar user dot attr dot mobile so oam will search for these two attributes after your uh, successful authorization and uh, insert them into the response headers and then the application can retrieve these headers and use uh, in their application so if you want to test uh, these uh, response attributes you can use uh, different tools or uh, browser plugins like firebug or live http headers but uh, oam also uh, provides uh, inbuilt oam tester utility which is based on uh, java you can test the complete sso process using your uh, oam tester so let me show that uh, quickly so if you go to your oam home so that is uh, under my fmw oracle underscore oam and then oam slash server and then tester so here you have something called as oam test dot jar so you can execute it using uh, java hyphen jar option this is a uh, oam tester tool so first uh, section is uh, server connection so you need to provide your uh, oam servers uh, details so in my case it is uh, oracle linux 6 and then the port so here you need to provide the proxy port which is uh, 5575 because um, this is the port uh, used uh, for communication between oam and webgate and then your agent id that is nothing but your uh, webgate name that's oracle linux 6 again in my case then you need to provide the password for your agent which you have uh, given during your uh, webgate registration and then click connect 
so it's connected to uh, the primary access server next you need to provide the protected resource URL that is nothing but your uh, web server details so in my case my web server is Oracle Linux 6 and then my web server port is 7777 and then the resource say for example slash my app 1 and then click on validate here you can see my uh, my app 1 is protected uh, using authentication scheme that is uh, LDAP scheme and then this is the URL of your uh, OAM next uh, section is user identity so you need to specify the username here so I'll just specify user dot zero and then the password I don't remember the password so let me quickly reset it okay the password is reset so let me provide the same password here and then click on authenticate so as you can see my user is authenticated and you can see the user dn here uid is equal to user dot zero ou is equal to people dc is equal to oim dc is equal to com so this is the dn from my uh, oud and then you have a session id next you can click authorize so now you can see authorize uh, is yes that means the authorization is successful so the user can access uh, this particular resource my app one and then you can see these two uh, header variables here which we have set oam user underscore mobile the user's mobile number and then uh, oam user underscore mail that is nothing but the user's uh, email so this is how you can test um, your uh, policies using oam tester tool now let's log into our application again using the new uh, user credentials so oracle linux 6 colon double seven double seven slash uh, my app one So now if you provide uh, weblogic credentials, your authentication should fail because we don't have weblogic user uh, in our OUD. So let's uh, test that first. So as you can see, you get uh, incorrect username or uh, password because uh, the user is not present in uh, OUD. Now let's try with our uh, user.0 and then the password now you should be able to log in so now we have configured our oam to use uh, external uh, ldap that is uh, oracle unified directory now uh, let me show you how to configure uh, custom unauthorized uh, page uh, to redirect the user if uh, the authorization fails so you can go to your uh, summary of your authorization policy here you have success url and failure url so under failure url you need to provide your uh, custom unauthorized page so in my case it is uh, http colon slash slash oracle linux 6 colon double seven double seven slash unauthorized dot html so if the authorization fails the user will be redirected to this particular uh, page so click apply and uh, make sure that uh, this page is unprotected now let's access the application using some other user who is not uh, added in the authorization policy as you know we have added only user.0 and uh, user.1 in our uh, authorization policy let's access uh, using uh, user.3 say for example so this user.3 is not added in the authorization policy so ideally uh, this user should not have access to the application so the authentication should be successful but uh, the authorization should fail so if we click on login as you can see the user is uh, redirected to uh, unauthorized uh, .html page that's it for today uh, in this demo you have seen uh, how to configure uh, webgate how to protect an application using oam and webgate and uh, how to configure uh, custom unauthorized uh, pages these are the basics of uh, protecting an application using oam and webgate so if you have any questions uh, please post them in the comments and i'll try to uh, answer them as soon as possible Hope you all liked the video and found it uh, helpful. If you did, please uh, give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel for more uh, technical videos like this one. That's it for today. Bye and uh, see you in the next one.